Hello, this is Vince Sales with Empire Builders. Here joining you again today to give you some insights on things for your startup or for you young entrepreneurs out there trying to get going. Today we want to talk about what, kind of, how should you form your startup business? What type of business entity should you choose? Um, there are five choices out there and I'll just jump right in it. First choice is sole proprietorship. Let's put a big X right through there right away. Sole proprietorship is really outdated. It was for a single owned business of one person. It's not uh, available to add investors. It's not set up for that. And it has major tax disadvantages and you bring on a lot of liability for your business. Basically, it's just a way of saying, I'm running a business by myself, but it's all under my name. So therefore, if something happens, they come after you and everything you've got. Uh, it is absolutely not set up to bring on investors or to grow a business. Second is what we call a general partnership. Again, this is outdated also, put a big X through it. It's a sole proprietorship times two or three, however many partners you got. Again, it has very bad tax disadvantages, uh, taxation, you don't get as many write-offs and everything is going to come in directly against you as an individual. And again, you are liable for the entire business, so it does not provide any protections for you and your personal property and things. The next group is what I call the big three, which is S Corp, which is S Corporation, uh, C Corporation, and then the LLC, which is a limited liability corp. The, all three of these are optional, and we'll just start with the S Corp. S Corp is kind of like a baby C Corp. That is, it's a corporation that's kind of designed for an individual or a small number of people coming together to form a, uh, incorporate to form a business entity. You actually set up a new company. This new company is an entity all up to itself, and it provides certain certain protections, barriers from if something happens to the business, you being attacked, sued, or being held liable. It's one of the big reasons that you people started incorporating was so that they would not be liable. The business becomes its own entity, its own like person. So the S Corp is very good. It's, it's kind of structured similar to a C Corp, but it's not quite as rigid. Uh, and it's kind of more designed for a smaller group of people, but it easily can convert to a C Corp and it's very acceptable for a new company starting It's going to bring on investors because you can issue shares and which then for you can bring on investors and bring on more people to the team uh, as part of the ownership team. Uh, again, it has certain great protect protections as far as liability, but it also has some tax advantages versus the other two that we X'd out because you, have, you can do a lot of company write-offs and then the past due income then comes down to you, which you can still have personal write-offs on. So it gives great tax advantages also. Let's jump right from that to, to, to the LLC, Limited Liability Corp. It is very, very similar to an S Corp, uh, but it's more set up from state to state as far as the rules. LLC is probably the newest entity out there that, that is kind of, uh, at this stage, been around 15, 20 years, but it has now become very optional, and most states have very good laws now to help LLCs provide the same protections as an S Corp or C Corp, but also give you the maximum flexibility. You can write your operating agreement for your LLC to work exactly how you want it. You can bring in partners, you can bring in investors, you can manage about one person. You don't have to necessarily have a board of directors. These are some of the more rigid things provided with an S Corp and a C Corp. So the LLC gives you the most flexibility, but it still gives you protection because it's its own entity from you being held liable for what happens with the company. It also, again, gives you some, the pass-through income after deduction so that you can uh, get that income and be able to, to maximize the advantages from a tax perspective. The third is the C-Corp. The C-Corp is the granddaddy of them all, been around the longest. It's very rigid and strict. A lot of rules were created as much as 100 years ago for the C-Corps. It comes with very standard things like a board of directors and certain rules and regulations. It can issue tons of shares, and you can scale as big as you want with the C-Corp. Uh, the, the problem with the C-Corp is it takes a little bit more to manage because it's more rigid, and it's a little bit more money to set up. But if you really know that your company is going to be getting big heights, you have the money to spend now, uh, it, it is being recommended these days by certain investor groups to go ahead on and set up a C-Corp. If your funds are limited, you're not knowing what, how big your company is going to grow, how fast, all that stuff, it is very easy to get out and within most states in 10, 15 minutes set up an S-Corp or LLC and be up and running. So that makes those very advantageous, and you don't really need, in many cases, any legal representation at that point to set those up. So it makes it very advantageous to do those to get, a, get your business started. 
you can always convert either the LLC or the S Corp to a C Corp later. Uh, so I, I recommend for a, a startup that doesn't know what, what it's going, what it's going to do, but you need to get your business started, start off with one of those two. And you can consult uh, your, your legal professional, local legal professional or accountant just to get their ideas on this. But I think starting off with either S Corp or LLC, get, you, get, get up and going, get running. You can still bring on investors at that point, and you can make those other changes if you really need to scale later. If you're coming in with a lot of money and your product or service is going to take multiple rounds of funding and you know this already, you may want to spend the extra money and start off as a C-Corp. But again, my advice for most startups and entrepreneurs is just take the LLC or go the S-Corp route, get going, get up and moving. It's going to, they're both going to provide you uh, protections against you being liable. And they're also going to both provide the same tax advantages. And you can even choose to operate as a C-Corp under those uh, before you even convert. So there's a lot of options with both of those. Again, the LLC brings the maximum flexibility, but I'll check each state's laws because different states have, govern LLCs a little differently. Um, so those are, are, are the, the cho choices, I think, are great choices out there for you. Uh, again, this is Vince Edwards here with Empire Builders. Um, happy that you tuned in. Please subscribe for more information on how to get your startup up and going. Keep, keep checking the channel, keep looking for more videos. We hope to help you guys get to the next level and build your own empires. You can always reach out to us and see about joining the Warren Nation, coming on and, and uh, letting us help you get to that next level. Have a wonderful day, take care. Thank you.